Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Monday morning, and uh, I just want to go back to uh, what we were saying yesterday about having a biblical faith. And I just wanted to say one or two things more about that, because if if we have, to have a biblical faith, and if the Bible is to be the centre of our lives and the centre of the authority for our lives, then it obviously begs the question, uh, well, on what on what basis can we be, trust the Bible to be true? On what basis can we we know that it that it works? And uh, and I think that just in the passage yesterday from Luke twenty four, I think we have sort of two particular clues. Well, actually, probably three clues. Uh, the first clue is this: that Jesus said to them in verse forty four, "This is what I told you whilst I was still with you." Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And you remember earlier on, on, on the road to Emmaus, uh, he said in verse 26, Did not the Christ have to suffer these things? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now, what that says to me is that Jesus had absolute confidence in the Old Testament. He had absolute confidence that the Old Testament was valid, was true, was God's word speaking to us. And again and again and again, he referred to the Old Testament as, the, as a, a, a body of documents, of books that we could rely on for God speaking to us and have authority over us. He, he often said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And, and he said it in such a way that, that, you know, this is the authority that we can trust and rely on. So the Old Testament, we can rely on the Old Testament being the words of God to us. But what about the New Testament? Because, of course, at this stage, the New Testament hadn't been written. Well, you, you see, in verse 48, it says, you are witnesses of these things. Uh, and he's more than just saying, you know, well, you've seen this, you know, that you're, you're the witnesses. I think he's saying much more than that, because these uh, these disciples, these apostles were going to be the very guys that were going to write it down for us for the future. They were going to be writing the New Testament. They didn't know that yet. They hadn't yet got, got it into their heads. Gosh, we must write this down. But they they were the ones that were going to write the New Testament documents for us. And every single one of them was an eyewitness. That's what Jesus said. You are witnesses of these things. That's why we can rely on the New Testament, because every single one of them was an eyewitness. Of course, the, the one exception to that, you might say, was the Apostle Paul, who wasn't an eyewitness of Jesus at the time. But we know from Galatians chapter 1 that, that Paul had a particular direct divine revelation of Jesus Christ. In some way, Jesus appeared to him, and Paul says that I was a witness to an eyewitness as well. So that actually accounts for all the New Testament letters, all except for one, actually, and that's the letter to the Hebrews. And we're still not sure who wrote the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, some people think it was Paul, but it's not really in his style. But nevertheless, it is so apostolic. They, they very quickly acknowledged that Hebrews was... Um, authoritative for us and good for us to learn from. So there you have the Old Testament and New Testament just in this passage of being the uh, reliable, authentic, author authoritative documents for us, for our learning to base our lives on. Uh, but there is actually one other clue, of course, and that is it's not just objectively we've got the Bible, we also subjectively know that it's true. We know that it's true from our own experience. And again, it says that in these verses. It says in verse 45, Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. In other words, they experienced for themselves God speaking to them. Or maybe a little bit further on on the road to Emmaus, were not our hearts burning within us while we talk while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Again, a same thing. This experience of God actually speaking to us personally. So, 
a part of the answer is, yes, objectively, we've got the Old Testament and the New Testament, but subjectively, we know that God is speaking to us because there are times when we read the words of Scripture or we hear the words being read or we hear it being preached and it feels like God speaking to us personally as if our hearts were burning within us. Now, I love this quote from um, Os Guinness, who's a, a writer and theologian. And he said this, The Christian faith is not true because it works. It works because it's true. <laughs> like, like that. We're, we're not saying our experience makes it authentic. What it means is that because the Bible is true, because it's authoritative, then it works in our lives and it's true. Uh, because it is true and it works and brings life to us and burns within us. Uh, let me just finish by reading a few words from Habakkuk, the end of Habakkuk chapter 3 where Habakkuk tells us that the whole of society has gone completely pear-shaped. Everything that one relies on is no longer there. There's no food, there's no drink, there's no meat, there's no grapes, there's no crops. Uh, and in fact, all, our, all their livelihood would have gone up the chute. He says, though the fig tree doesn't bud, there are no grapes on the vines. Though the olive crop fails, the fields produce no food. There are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls. <laughs> Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. Extraordinary, isn't it? Everything has gone wrong. And yet, he says, listen, but, but still, I trust in God. I just trust in God. And what was his experience? His experience was this. My, the Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. So objectively, he trusted in God, but subjectively, he experienced God working in his life, giving him strength, enabling him to be sure-footed, and enabling him to get a perspective, going on the heights, getting a proper perspective of his life. And that's going to be the same for us too. In this time, yes, we hold on, we trust in God, we hold on to him, but do you know what? We will experience, as we trust in him, we will experience him working in our lives. I was uh, listening to Tim Keller the other day, and he was r reminding us of that great missionary called Alan Gardner, who was one of the forerunners of the South American Missionary Society. And he was in uh, uh, way down in the south, and uh, he was with a group of other missionaries, and everything was going wrong. They were being attacked by the local population. They were dying of disease. They were dying of hunger and thirst and starvation. And every single one of his companions was dying. And he was the last to die. And the last thing he wrote in his journal was this. He said, I am overwhelmed by the goodness of God. Now that is what I call experiencing God. That's what I call not just trusting God, but actually experience him, him working in difficult circumstances. So Susie's going to come and pray for us. So let's pray together. I just wanted to share something that I'd, I'm still thinking about trusting God a lot. And, um, and I love what... Um, happened with uh, Mother Teresa. She's one of my heroines and um, someone was with her and just staying with her and um, she said to them, what do you want me to pray for? And he said, pray that I have clarity. And she said firmly, no, I'll not do that. When he asked her why, she said, clarity is the last thing you are clinging to and must let go of. And when he commented that she always seems to have the clarity he longed for, she laughed and said, I have never had clarity. What I have always had is trust. So that I will pray that you trust God. Mm. And he does, I think, you know, I, I know that God gives us just enough. And we are to seek his face in reading the word, praying. And that's what I'm going to pray for now. Lord, you are everything and 
You are our King mm. and our Saviour, mm. and we thank you. We thank you that you give us our daily bread. We trust you, Lord. We surrender to you. And we pray, Lord, that you'll transform us through your word, through your Holy Spirit. Help us to see what you want us to see today. Mm. And we pray for those who are suffering. Mm. We ask, Lord, that you would heal the sick, that you'd heal this land, and you give wisdom to those in authority. And we pray, Lord, that people will turn their eyes to you. Amen. 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 Have a lovely day.